In this section, we're going to talk about quarter contracts. The contract will be the second component of our token Cord app that we'll build. We saw earlier that in Corda, the ledger is a set of shared facts or states. So how do we update this ledger over time? Well, nodes update the ledger using transactions. A transaction is a proposal to modify the current ledger in some way. It consumes zero or more existing states on the ledger, what we call the input states, and it produces zero or more new ledger states, what we call the output states. And so if this transaction proposal is approved, then its input states are marked as consumed or historic, and that means they can no longer be used as inputs to future transactions, while the output states are created on the ledger and come to reflect the current state of the ledger. The output states from one transaction then become the input states of future transactions, meaning that they're marked as consumed or historic in turn. And this is how the ledger evolves over time. Just by looking at a transaction's inputs and output states, it can be hard to tell what a transaction is doing. For example, here we see a transaction that has a cash input state, a bond input state, a cash output state, and a bond output state. And we don't know what this transaction represents. It might represent the purchase of a bond, it might represent a coupon payment on a bond, or it might represent something completely different. Without further information in the transaction, there's often no way to know. And so to clarify the intent of a transaction, we add one or more commands. And these commands tell us what ledger updates the transaction represents. So for example, in this transaction that we see here, the commands indicate that we are transferring cash from one party to another, and that we're doing this because we're paying a coupon on a bond. So we now know that this doesn't represent a bond purchase or anything else. It represents a transaction transferring cash as a coupon payment on a bond. And each command has an associated list of required signers. So for example, a Cord App developer may have defined a Cord App such that uh, cash transfers must be signed by the uh, owner of the cash, and coupon payments must be signed by the bond issuer and the owner of the bond. And then to be valid, the transaction proposal would have to gather signatures from all the required signers of all the commands. So the transaction proposal would have to gather signatures from the cash's owner, Alice, the bond's owner, Bob, and the issuer of the bond, Alice. So overall, you'd have to get signatures from Alice and Bob. So how is this represented in code? Well, commands are represented by the command with parties class, and transactions are represented by the ledger transaction class. And we're gonna take a look at both of these classes in the next section.